Hey everybody, it's Gauntletx, and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Manor Sealed Qualifier Play-In Event. This is going to be another best of three competitive Murders at Karlov Manor Sealed events, where I'm going to be converting my play-in points into some more gems, and if we manage to win four rounds before losing a single round, we will get qualified for the upcoming Qualifier Weekend. So, that could be pretty cool, but... I'm happy with any record here, as long as we can get some gems out of the event, that is cool with me. Without further ado, let's bust open these packs and see what we get to play with today. Alright, well this is going to be an interesting sealed pool for sure. I don't think very many of these rares are super playable in limited. But we do have three dual lands and a Niv Mizzet guild pact, and to help try to dirtle around long enough to hit all five colors, we have two board wipes with two copies of deadly cover up. So I think the most likely thing we're doing here, based on the rares alone, is a pretty controlling deck, definitely playing black, because two board wipes is relatively consistent for a 40 card deck to build around and try to play a lower creature count and really try to two and three for one your opponent with these things. So it's pretty nice. I don't think Undergrowth Recon and Kylox are very playable and War Leader's Call is going to need a pretty aggressive deck. A lot of really aggressive commons and uncommons in red and white, but red and white are two of the strongest colors in this format, especially white. White is insane in this format. So if we have the good commons and uncommons, then there is that alternate path to take as well, where we just play Boros Aggro with War Leader's Call and just go to town. So if we're lucky enough to have a sealed pool with multiple copies of Inside Source, the 1-1 one -one that makes a 2-2, multiple copies of Dog Walker, the 3-1 that makes two 1-1s, one -ones, stuff like that, then uh, War Leader's Call could be a place to be as well. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get really lucky with fixing and we can go 5-color niv Mizzet Control with two board wipes, or... We'll just get solid luck out of commons and uncommons and go for a streamlined aggro deck with War Leader's Call. Those seem like the two places to be here. So let's check out the multicolored and colorless. This will show us how much fixing we have that does not require a specific color. So there is an escape tunnel and scene of the crime. There is main deckable artifact removal in this format that makes me quite low on scene of the crime. But if we do try to play a five color niv -Mizzet deck, we're going to have the main deck scene of the crime, so we will keep that in mind for fixing. So escape tunnel plus scene of the crime, that's two mana fixing lands and basically no color of the spells. Magnifying glass is just not really playable. For the multicolored, there's a great removal spell in green-white that also fixes, gives us a mana of any color. So that'd be pretty great in a five color niv -Mizzet deck. Uh, there's a lightning helix, which would be fantastic in Boros aggro if we've got enough stuff. War leaders call and lightning helix in that direction. And... Super happy to see this. Unlike our last sealed pool, we are actually not that deep on multicolored spells. There's still a good chunk of them, but that's because there's like these three lands taking up the slots as well. When you look at this, this is a decent bit less multicolored than our last sealed pool, which means that our colors will be a lot deeper than they were last time. We had some colors in our last sealed pool that only had like five spells, period. Not even playables, just five spells spells at all so hopefully this time around we actually have like 10 spells at least per color so we can do a streamlined two color deck uh preferably boros aggro where we can use this gadget technician with its hybrid mana cost to flip that would be a perfectly reasonable card for a go wide aggro deck that runs cards like uh war leaders call and stuff like that so yeah, solid stuff here. I'm actually the most excited after seeing the multicolored stuff about a potential Boros aggro deck, seeing as we have Helix and War Leader's Call, but there are decent options for a niv -Mizzet deck too. This wants us to have a lot of permanents in our deck with exactly two colors, and we've got a lot of those that are playable, like Gadget Technician, Whipcracker, Buried in the Garden, specifically the Buried in the Garden being really appealing since it's removal spell since it's a removal spell and fixing. So let's check out our individual colors now. White is looking great. Big fan of that. There's only one copy of the inside source, but there's a lot of really important, really powerful cards for aggressive archetypes in this format. We have two novice inspectors to hit the ground running and also investigate so that we can sack that clue draw card when we have nothing else to do. Tons of two mana creatures which is great. We can try to outspeed our opponents. 
by just consistently curving out one drop, two drop, three drop. We've got uh, two perimeter enforcers, which are actually pretty decent if your detective count is all right. And it looks all right here. There's one, two, three, four, five detectives. It's not horrible. And even if you don't have a great detective count, if you have good ways to buff it up with decent equipment like Wrench um, and combat tricks like On the Job, that can also help you really win a race with the life linking. There's a super premium uncommon with Neighborhood Guardian, just whenever you're playing any of your little creatures, you're buffing whatever you need to. This card is fantastic, helps your 2-2s uh, your attack in as 3-3s three against your opponent's 2-2 two -two disguise cards and stuff. Really helps you find a lot of extra damage. Card is wonderful. And uh, we've got three copies of On the Job, which is probably more than we want if we don't have good ways in red to go wide. But like one or two copies of this can go a long way to finishing the game. It is kind of the perfect uh, finisher for a deck that has a lot of copies of Inside Source and Dog Walker and stuff. But we didn't open up any Dog Walkers and we only opened up one Inside Source. So don't know how fantastic it'll be here. We'll, we'll see. White does look really good, though. Really aggressive. Great card draw with Double Inspector. I'm pretty excited about that. For blue, this is a pretty empty color. Not a lot of cards here. And uh, there's a couple pieces of, well, I mean, none of these are completely unplayable, but they're kind of filler, like the accusations, eliminate the impossible, and burden of proof. I do like the creatures, like all of these, Coveted Falcon, Crime Stopper Sprite, and Cold Case Cracker, but there's no huge reason to be in the color, and it's pretty low on playables, so. We would need a secondary color with a ton of stuff uh, going for it. For our black now, this is a great control color if we want to just try to grind games out. It hasn't played super well in this format, but probably plays pretty well in sealed. I mean, double cover up, double extract a confession, and soul enervation for great removal spells. Macabre reconstruction to get ahead and value late game. These creatures all kind of suck. They're all just too expensive for what they're doing and aren't that great. But the board wipes and the removal is pretty good. So, yeah, interesting control color if we have the right stuff to pair up with it. Check out the red. Well, we did not have a lot of removal out of white. That was the one thing we were missing here. We had combat tricks and tons of creatures. Red gives us the incredible removal with three shock, two galvanize, and a case of the burning masks. I'm pretty pumped about the Boros. It's not perfect. It's not a Boros draft deck by any means. There's no dog walkers here. There's only one person of interest, one inside source. We probably have to cut Crime Novelist. But, uh, I don't know. It's still looking like probably it's going to be one of the best things this uh, the sealed pool can do. Really depends on how insane our green mana fixing is. If we have just tremendously good fixing in green, maybe we will do that five color control. Uh, but we have literally no fixing in green. Our green's actually super weird here. There's almost nothing in here. We have like six combat tricks for no reason. Because if we're playing a green deck, we're not playing anything aggressive. There are two creatures in green. And we've got six combat tricks and an equipment. So that's incredibly awkward. We also have Slime Against Humanity, which is completely unplayable. It's a three mana 2-2, two -two, unless you have a bunch of copies of it. Knot of the Bone is super narrow and basically unplayable and sealed. Undergrowth Recon, super narrow, basically unplayable and sealed. Okay, yeah, green is just not a playable color for the sealed pool. So we can't do a big nib mizzet thing. The only thing is, like, maybe some kind of black control deck. But I have to imagine that just Boros Aggro with Lightning Helix and War Leader's Call is going to be better than pairing black with any secondary color here. Because our best secondary color, in terms of the quantity of playables, seeing as this is still only 37 cards, this is still exactly 40 cards. Yeah, I mean, our best secondary color, we can't play a million combat tricks with, like, no creatures, so it's not green. It would be red or white still. It'd be, like, black-white or red-black. I imagine it'd be black-white, because white gives us uh, good card advantage plays to go along with all this removal. Um, but I think our Boros is just better than, like, some weird Orzhov control deck. Um, and we're certainly not playing Niv-Mizzet, Rift Burst, Hellion, Kylox, Crocodile, Buried in the Garden, War Leaders Call, Lightning Helix if we go black-white. 
uh, or the cadaver. Yeah, this other jobs don't really work here. We're down to 13 creatures. Yeah, I mean, uh, we could go black red as well. That gives us a bunch of just cheap removal to go with all the black removal and the board wipes. But there's like no finishers is the problem. You need finishers in your control decks, which is what Nib Mizzet was going to do for us if we could manage to go um, five colors. But yeah, we go black red control where we're just like board wiping people and using a bunch of one for one removal. And then what are we winning with a five five menace? A single 5-5 five, five Menace, they play one removal spell, and then we have barely any creatures in the deck. Or we're just playing Black-White, where all of our white cards are good, aggressive creatures on curve, and then that just makes the board whites kind of awkward. Yeah, no. I think Red-White is just by far the most synergistic thing to do here, and it gives us Lightning Helix War Leader's Call. This is kind of a build-your-own sealed pool. Um... Not a build your own, like a, a build itself kind of sealed pool. There is just one clear path that I think is quite a bit above the rest this time. So we'll just go Boros. We need to cut eight more cards here. This is all of our hybrid mana cards that we could play, uh, as well as all of our red and white cards. Check the creature count. We're at 16 creatures, but we also have a concealed weapon. That's another three mana 2-2. Two, two. Um, and a Crowvod Haunch that is 4 mana for 2 one ones. Obviously not great. But these are adding to that creature count, so it's like 18 right now. Like to keep that creature count as close to 17 as possible. It's currently at 18. Um, but there are some creatures in here that probably just shouldn't be in this kind of deck. Number 1 is probably Crime Novelist. We're sacrificing maybe two artifacts over the course of a game. There are two investigating creatures. That's two artifacts to sacrifice. There's one wrench that we probably never want to sacrifice for the most part. I'm not even going to really count that. So there's two novice inspectors. And maybe we play two copies of On the Job. We're not going to play three. So there's like four clue tokens in here. Yeah, I mean, around all this is not going to be a thing. I guess I could keep the Crowvod Haunch in here too. Like, there's gonna be like six things to sack total, maximum. Yeah. I think that has to be the instant cut. Bystanders are weakest to drop. Hellion just doesn't make a lot of sense for this kind of deck. That's a lot of mana to flip. Um, and then double five drops probably a bit much. The Vigilante is much better than the Braggart in this kind of deck. So these are potential cuts. These five, but that would be cutting five creatures out of here. And then we would be down to 12 creatures total, which we definitely don't want to be with War Leader's Call and probably at least one of these on the jobs. I guess Call a Surprise Witness can also count as a creature. Anytime that we draw it and we do have one of our one or two mana value creatures in grave. Works with three mana value as well. Yeah. I guess in order to make sure that's playable, throw another two drop back in. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine creatures in this deck with that mana value or less. Don't. It's still very narrow, but I don't hate it. I think I like it better than the five drop to seven drop here. So we can cut those. This is 15, 16 creatures. So it's 15 creatures and a Call of Surprise Witness. Don't love these creatures, but I do like having the creature count higher. So I guess we'll play the weird, kind of awkward equipment creatures. Gives us five cuts to go. I'm actually taking a peek through the sealed pool, seeing if I can find any more creatures. Because we have multiple duels. Like, we could splash a little bit of blue splash a little bit of black because we could go dual land plus escape tunnel plus scene of the crime in that direction so if there's any like easily splashable creatures to up this count i would rather play those than a concealed weapon um and a crowvod haunch kind of stuff but i'm not seeing any really solid easily splashable creatures there's a 3 mana 3 3 in black, a 4 mana 3 4, and a 5 mana 3 6. That is it for black creatures. And the board wipe's not that splashable 
needs double black. Blue, we could splash in some Crime Stopper sprites, I guess. Or a cold case cracker. Is that worth it? How bad does the mana become? Oh no, I guess the black splash would be the easiest because we've got two black duels actually. And they're both on color. Red and then black. White and then black. So we just run this over a plains, we run this over a mountain. But there's no creatures to put in in black. I kind of wish these were both blue and then probably would be easy enough to throw the uh, Crime Stopper sprites in here. You know, honestly, I feel like I'm more likely to flip up a Rift Burst Hellion than a Concealed Weapon. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm going to run the Hellion over the weapon. And I don't think I'm doing any splashing. I'm definitely not splashing the black. If I splash the blue, it's by throwing these three and an island into the deck for a 3-3 three, three flyer and some 2-2 two, two flyers. Which can't be worth it as much as I'd love to up the creature count. Yeah, it just it can't be worth it. We'll just run our goofy haunch thing and maybe run a braggart. One more peek at that creature count. This is 15 plus Crowbot Haunch. Plus call a surprise witness. Alright, I'll I'll cut the braggart still then. And that's uh, that's 14 plus Haunch and Witness. Good enough. I don't think our board state is that extremely wide that extremely often, so we'll drop at least one on the drop, maybe two. Just run the one of finisher. Yeah, we'll just run one for now. It's also a lot of burn, and I think Case of the Burning Masks is by far the most difficult to cast. Now, it can give us the most value. A removal spell that also draws us a card, because it can kill something, and then if we solve it by hitting our opponent with three things, we can uh, we can then draw another card off of it, which is super sweet, but we are much heavier into white than red, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to go 9-7 split here on a 16 lander, so I'm going to drop that. That double red is a little difficult. One more cut. I mean, we've got two Galvanize, a Lightning Helix, and two Shocks, even if I cut one of them, so I think I'm going to cut one Shock. And then the really nice thing here, since it is best of three and we have so many burn spells, is uh, in the wrong matchups where they don't have the cheap creatures to shock and galvanize, um, we can cut those out and throw in bigger stuff like Braggart. Because there's not a lot of bigger stuff. Uh, but in the right matchups, we throw another shock in, throw a case in if we need it. You know, some stuff like that. So we have some sideboarding options here, even just sticking to Boros, which I think we would want to do for the most part. I think it's just the strongest color pair in the sealed pool. Yeah, this looks pretty reasonable, looks pretty solid. Definitely far prefer this deck to our last one. Hopefully it'll play out as much better as it is in my head, but we'll call it a deck here. All right, one last change. I'm actually going to swap the wrench out for another on the job. I think if we want more, uh, if we want dirtily equipment, we already have a crowbot haunch in here that we could just not sacrifice. There's some matches where Wrench might play better than a second on the drop, but I think most matches, the second on the drop is just going to be better. Wrench would be nice if we're in a matchup where we're constantly like getting walled off by 2-2s and 3-3s, being able to buff up our 2-2 two -two to be a 3-3 three -three to tack into theirs with Vigilance is pretty nice. Um, but for the most part, not, not that effective as a mana sink. Rather just wrap the game up at four mana with another on the job. I guess one last thing I should mention before we completely wrap up deck building is we do have the option of throwing Thundering Falls in here uh, so that we could hard cast Granite Witness and Gadget Technician on occasion. And it's a good land to draw when you're flooding out. It's better than just drawing uh, just a basic at that point. But I think in a pretty aggressive deck like this, the risk of hitting a tap land at a time when you are trying to curve out and play as aggressively as possible 
is a genuine downside. So I'm just going to stick to all untapped mana here, and we'll just be okay with always disguising the witnesses and technicians and stuff. Because this could be drawn at a pivotal point where it's like really bad. Like if it's turn four, we've got three lands on board. We've got a great board state and an on the job in hand. And then we top deck Thundering Falls and we can't cast the on the job that turn. Like just even playing one turn off of curve can be devastating in a really aggressive deck. So just going to play all untapped lands and uh, we'll call it a deck here. All right, here's a final look at today's deck list. We're on a nice little Boros aggro deck, lucky enough to just open up a great curve of aggressive creatures in this color pair to go along with our great War Leaders call, buffing the whole board, and Lightning Helix for just really efficient removal. So super sweet stuff all around here. A little bit of card draw for some longevity with some novice inspectors, some ways to make the board state wide with person of interest, gadget technician, and inside source. That way we would try to get around our opponent's blockers by getting a super wide board. And again, a great curve with a bunch of two mana cards like Market Watch Phantom, Neighborhood Guardian, some Perimeter Enforcers, Season Consultant, and Innocent Bystander. So great curve of creatures, great cheap removal, great finishers with on the job. Just pretty great stuff for a sealed pool all around. Nice little aggro deck here. We'll see how it plays out for us, though, as we head into the gameplay. Here we are on the play for game number one. This is a snap keep. We do not have the red source for Innocent Bystander, but the hand is still incredible. We start with Novice Inspector, and then we just start running out detectives right after the Perimeter Enforcer. Consistently get in two damage with that. Playing against a red deck, that's going to play a turn one knife. No creatures on board yet. Drawn to another Novice Inspector. Don't hate that all. It's an additional detective, and it investigates again. So, solid stuff. And it is going to be the Boros Mirror Match. What is this draft? There's a Vengeful Tracker. That's actually kind of rude against our deck. But that's okay. Imagine we inside source... Well, our board state's wide enough. We will be attacking with a 3-3 if we drop Consultants here. Unless they play two removal spells, we can get that big consultant swing in next turn. I guess it involves chump attacking with one of these novice inspectors, which isn't the greatest. But it is probably worth it. I guess it depends what they play here. This also holds off the tracker if they don't put a knife on it. If they do put a knife on it, I'm actually really happy with that. Then we just let it in. Because if they spend two mana to give it plus and plus O first strike and just don't play any more creatures, that's just great for us over here. Okay, they've got their own Novice Inspector. Premium common, the actual best common in the set. And Market Watch Phantom, that's another incredible common. Plays like a two mana 2-2 two -two flyer most of the time. Got one in our deck as well. Find a Shock, that's a very nice draw. Very nice draw. So the awkward part is I don't have the mana to play inside source pre-combat and hold up the shock. Kind of want to hold up a shock here and just send in, see if they try to double block consultants. Um, and if they don't try to double block consultant, we can just kill one of the creatures that's blocking a 1-2. Dang, they didn't block with Vengeful Tracker. I was really hoping they would. I kind of wanted to kill Vengeful Tracker here. I mean, we're still definitely in the lead, especially with the lifelink from the Enforcer, so I can take some damage from Vengeful Tracker in order to just keep Novice Inspector on board and keep the board state wide. So let's shoot ourselves in the face here. Go back down to 22 to see if we hit land for turn. We do not hit land for turn. But that's why we main phase that uh, that clue token instead of doing it during theirs, since we didn't hit our land drop yet. And if I hit a land drop there, played my fourth land, and then top deck the fifth next turn, it would matter that I played both lands, because then I could cast both of these, or play this and crack a clue. Just gives us a lot more options. 
crime novelist. Ooh, so that gets bigger when they sack the clues, and the knife is a clue too, so that works too. Ooh, the haunch? Actually very good on perimeter enforcer. Do I want to just do that? I still don't hate attacking in with a 3-3 on the ground. They can block with tracker and novelist, I guess. Or tracker and novice inspector. But I get to I get to trade into the tracker and actually use my clues from that point on. Yeah, if I play inside source, I hit for one less damage than if I play haunch, but I also use uh, I get a wider board state. Plus, inside source can also just buff the enforcer too, with its three mana ability. So I'm gonna do this. I guess only one Inspector Trump attacks. Well, no, because they could go Tracker on Inspector and then double block the other one. Um, but if they do, they take five, go to seven. Really only matters for, um, for making the Consultant smaller on future attacks. I guess I do this. Trump consultants go to 10. They've got four mana now. Two clues to sack. A knife and just a regular clue. We're still at 24. So it looks like it should be a decent matchup for us for the most part, because like our double perimeter forcer and our lightning helix, those are going to be devastating in an aggressive mirror. Just having a life gain along with the damage we're dealing is nasty stuff. Okay, I could again haunch and start hitting for three in the sky every turn, but I'd rather keep getting the board state wider and just hit for slightly less damage. So they can sack the clue to make Novelist a 2-4, which is actually pretty annoying. A 2-4 blocker on the ground. So they just block my 2-2 two -two with a 2-4. Block my 3-3. Three -three. They don't block my 3-3 three -three if they do that, so... Yeah, chump attack here with a 2-2 two -two to find 3 extra damage, maybe. We'll obviously just be playing the conch, uh, the haunch, uh, main phase two. Be mana efficient there, get it on the board. So if we hit a land, we can equip it and play a bystander or equip it and play a clue next turn. Auspicious arrival. Pre blocks trigger the prowess and have a 4 4 blocker up. Okay, the prowess doesn't really matter, but the 4 4 blocker up does. Okay. Basically the same thing that I thought was going to happen, which is um, one creature gets in profitably, and one just dies. Instead of that, one creature traded profitably, the other one just died. Which is pretty similar, pretty comparable, I didn't hate that interaction. Would love to see a top deck land that would let us attack in with both of our flyers, and that would be an awesome position to be in. We are never going to find that next land. So whether I play the technician or equip the haunch, I'm getting two more damage in, so it's a little better to get another creature on the board and get two damage in. Than it is to gain two more life and get Two more damage in. Got two cards in their hand here. If it's two removal spells, our opponent could be on their way to stabilizing, but I think even if they have like one removal spell here, we're still quite a bit ahead. Because one removal spell can kill our 2-2 two -two flyer, but we now have a gadget technician that's going to flip whenever we find another mountain. 
and that'll give us an additional flyer to be sending in with. And even if we're down to just the 1-1 one, one flyer, we make it a 3-1 flyer. Ooh, Gearbane Orangutan. Actually very good right now. It's a reach blocker for them, and it kills our Crovod Haunch to stop us from buffing one of these flyers with two additional power. It's actually a very good Crovod Haunch matchup. Or Crowbot Hunch, a very good Gear Bane Orangutan matchup. Alright, there's another face down. Well, we hit the fourth mana a turn after our Hunch died anyway, so we can't exactly. Bystander plus Hunch. I guess I could just Person of Interest then, and that's fine. Trade the Phantom for the Orangutan. Oh, snap. That's a detective, too. So, yeah, just trade either of these into the orangutan and get in for two. Put them to three. Seems very good. Then I can just, like, attack with everybody next turn and kill them. Or if I hit a land, I can play bystander and then buff the phantom and kill them with the inside source for plus two, plus zero. Oh. Hit them for four in the sky. I do need to play the bystander to give flying to the phantom before I do that, but that would be a route to victory if this isn't a, a flyer, if neither of these are a flyer. It would have to be the double white flyer. Okay, it's a dog walker. Dang. I'm actually, I am jealous of the dog walker, but I think we are favored because of our random life gain, our incidental life gain here. Ooh. All right, red source is... Even better than just a random land, because now I get to make another flyer just in case. Trigger the Phantom and attempt the In the Sky lethal here. Boom. All right. One and oh, heading into game two. I honestly don't think we really need to sideboard, but another shock is pretty solid for this matchup. I think that's it, though. Um, what would be bad in this matchup? I mean, they had the Orangutan, so I could... Cut the uh, the Granite Witness, I guess. It's a little hard to cast, and if they play an Orangutan against it, that is actually devastating. They kill our 3-2 Flying Vigilance with that. But I also don't really want to cut down on creatures, so I could also just cut the Haunch. Lower the number of targets their Orangutan has. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that's, like, horrible in this matchup. There's mainly just cards that are good in this matchup, which are uh, Lightning Helix, Double Perimeter Enforcer. I think those cards are incredible in the matchup. Does it trigger when you flip a detective? It does. Okay, I'm keeping it in. Granite Witness is a Gargoyle Detective, so... Keeping everything I can that works with the Enforcer. Definitely keeping the Vigilante. I guess I just got the Hellion. That's going to be a lot of mana for this matchup. That seems reasonable. I'll cut a Hellion. We're, yeah, we're getting a little low on creatures. 13. That's pretty low. But. I feel like this is a really good shock matchup. Maybe. Maybe actually. They played nothing with like. Oh, well, that's helpful. I can't even look at the game. Thanks, Serena. I was going to view the battlefield and see if they played anything that uh, had more than two toughness. Um, but in, interest of, in the interest of keeping our creature count high, I actually kind of want to see if maybe just cut one Galvanize for one shock is, is better and just keeping the Hellion in. Keep more creatures. That's what I'm going to do. I would have loved to check the graveyard and the board state, but... I think the only thing they played that I'd have to have galvanized would be the, the crime novelist. I think it was just like one card that was that big. All right. Pretty great curve here. We get to play the inspector, crack the clue, turn two, then play a Hellion and a person of interest, turn three and four. Excellent mana this time around. We have already drawn more lands than we did game one, which means maybe we'll get to flip a Hellion. 
All right, the face up dog walker is very aggressive, especially when your opponent has dropped the one mana one two. They must have combat tricks or removal to clear a path here. Otherwise, like trading my one mana novice inspector for their two mana dog walker is just an insane trade in our favor. Because we're trading our one mana play into their two mana play, and ours drew us a card, so we're also up a card. We're up in tempo, and we're up a card in value. Alright, so they're just not going to attack. Yeah, this is strange. This is strange. Okay, so I, I don't have double white to flip up Granite Witness, so either of these that I play is quite some time from flipping... But we definitely play one of them. I guess I'll play the Granite Witness, because I'd be less bummed if it randomly dies. Uh, seeing as we don't know when we're going to draw another white source. But if I draw literally any land, I have Hellion. I've got five out of six mana. So I think I'd be more bummed to see Rift Burst Hellion die early. Okay, well, that's just going to kill a Novice Inspector. That is also not bad for me. Three mana removal on the one drop. We take those. Take this trade, too, so they're just down to three cards. Honestly, I think I do. Even if I flip this up into the 3-2 Flying Vigilance, it's um, small enough to trade into that on blocks. Like, it can keep hitting them, but I think I need to just stop their initial onslaught and then win the long game at this point. We're already up so far in cards. We just keep that kind of going. Just get ahead in card advantage and then drop a 6-7. That's the game plan. Oh, well, they're coming back. Novice Inspector certainly helps a lot. Especially with a wrench on board to actually make it a size that matters, a 2-3 body. We might have to get 2 for 1 tier where we helix that. And uh, they just draw a card in that interaction. The technician. 3-2 um, body is kind of perfect here. That makes it so I don't think I need to lightning helix. Especially because we've got the Menace to just chip in. Um, and then we'll have a 3-2 body to just chip in. And a Flyer. Yeah, Technician's a very good draw. Probably the perfect draw. Like, I guess outside of, like, War Leader's Helix, it's probably the best draw in our deck for that turn. Perfect mana-wise, too. But yeah, it just lines up so well against a 2-3. To let us keep our Lightning Helix for later. So we just want to make sure they can't... Get three different sources of damage dealt. So we do want to try to keep trading to their creatures pretty aggressively just to keep the count, though. Mm, now that card is very good. There goes our uh, Gadget Technician, but we can make sure to get value out of it first. Oh, never mind. There goes our 2-2. I guess that way, if I ever hit uh, Enchantment Removal, they would uh, still permanently have gotten rid of my card. I can't save my card with Enchantment Removal, but I don't think we have Enchantment Removal in here, so I don't think it matters. This could also be them holding up three mana for something else, rather than paying for the ward on a disguise card. And that looks to be the case. Yeah, they're doing something, main phase two. It's a make your move, destroy an artifact enchantment or creature with power for greater. So now they don't have that to kill a rift burst hellion. Seems good, seems good. I'm going to overextend into a board wipe a tiny bit, just because I think they shouldn't be playing a board wipe with the way their deck is built. Even if they have one in their sealed pool. Although, this is game two, so they could have sided in the board wipe and cut down on their creature count a little bit. That would actually be next level. 
Maybe I should play a little bit around a board wipe. There, I think there's two in white. There's one in white, one in black, and one in blue-red. I don't know if there's any more than that. I think there is. It feels like there is. But maybe it's just uh, the one of each. Rift Burst Hellion's so funny in this deck. I'm so used to draft. Where, like, you really want to build your decks, like, full synergy and stuff. Where, when you're in a draft and you see the Boros player and they have a face down, you're like, okay, so this, this is going to be a Dog Walker or a Gadget Technician or something. Something to get that board state wide to go with the on-the-jobs and stuff. And I'm just over here like, nope. It's our gruel Hellion. All right. We are 2-0 heading into game number two. Nice run this time around, now guaranteed to be at least a 50-50 win rate because it only takes a single match loss to be out of this event. And because of that, we do escalate in our prizes really quickly. We're getting at least 2,000 gems out of the event, so that's going to buff my account back up to that 20k gem mark. So pretty happy about this all around. Uh, but we'll see if we can't get a few more wins and get some really high amounts of gems. We have a plan, and that is War Leader's Call, turn three. Our opponent is on the play with a turn one Rubble Belt Maverick, so we will not be full steam ahead pile on aggroing them. They will be the first one playing two drops, the first one playing three drops, and so on. So start the game a tiny bit behind, as you do on the draw. But I think the hand is solid. Ooh, shock. I don't think we shock a Maverick, because it gives them value from the grave, and all it does on board is be a 1-1. One, one. Um, but we do hold up the shock. It's going to make it very obvious, because Arena's a little cheaty face, uh, that we have a shock, but it's worth it just in case we want to play it. Here's Perimeter Enforcer past the turn. Yeah, I mean, Perimeter Enforcer single-handedly stops all the damage that this Maverick does, so there's really no reason to shock that. That is a way better shock target, but we can also do other stuff, like War Leader's Call. That's quite tempting. Can War Leader's Call into Novice Inspector plus Shocker Galvanize next turn? Yeah, I'm pretty cool with that. Jam on in, we're down to 17, but should be pretty impossible for them to race here. There's a perfect galvanized target, so now we get to play Novice Inspector, shoot them for one, and buff <laughs> the Enforcer. Look at all the triggers, let's go. Uh, and then clear a path with Galvanize. You can have the card advantage, as long as I kill you before you can use all those cards, it'll be fine. Even if they find a way to kill Perimeter Enforcer, we just call it as a surprise witness. If they don't find a way to kill it, this will be a really simple game. Unless they play something very scary themselves. Projector Inspector, great card. Some nice little card filtering here. Draw a card, discard a card. Getting rid of a... Double black and X mana draw spell for super late in the game when they don't even have a single swamp yet. There's the Nervous Gardener to find a single swamp for any removal they might be splashing in black. Although double black is not really a splash, they're just full on three color at that rate. We do hit land four, which is beautiful. I'm pretty fine with Novice Inspector trades. Let's just get the person of interest down. That is the most devastating play we have. With War Leader's Call on board, so that they're both 3 threes. It's super nasty. Yeah, that's that's pretty devastating. Absolutely roll with that. Alright, trade into a 2-2. Two -two. Clear it out of the way. Since the 1-1 uh, one -one has value in the grave, the 2-2 two -two does not. Not only are we killing the bigger creature, but we're also preventing any graveyard shenanigans. I 
I guess I could just draw or call my novice inspector as a witness if I want. Just get another flyer if they don't kill the enforcer still. Because whatever I resurrect gains flying. Topiary Panther. That's quite a big blocker. Luckily it is on the ground. I can't play a detective here unless I call my inspector as a witness. Honestly, I think that's a perfectly reasonable line. Let's get a witness here. We do it pre-combat to get the extra perimeter enforcer trigger. Getting a detective to hit the board. Um, I guess if they block wrong, then I just shock their face and they're dead. Like if they let a single creature through. They did not let a single creature through. So we say cool. And then uh, just draw a card off a clue. I don't think I've played a land this turn. I guess it's probably still better to just hold up shock and do it during their end step, just in case. Could have shocked the panther, but with our opponent at five and war leaders call triggering on every creature we play, I want to save the shock to be able to shoot them in the face. Especially considering the only creatures we're going to have left in that interaction are flyers anyway. So the panther doesn't even do any blocking right now. But I could see an argument for just killing the panther there. Just taking that 6-5 down. Uh, instead of the 1-1 one, one in their grave. Coerced to kill on the Enforcer. Sure, it's still tapped. They have one mana up. Put a counter on and they're tapped out. So that means shock the face, play one creature, they're dead. All right. That is 1-0 for round number two. See if I get to look at the battlefield this time. That's a very annoying bug. All right, well, I mean, they're Sultai grindy control sort of stuff. They have a big X mana value finisher that costs double black and X. They have a mind control with coerced to kill. Uh, anything we have that's really good in this matchup? Not exactly. Wrench might be fine for tapping down big blockers later, but I think I just want to stay pretty aggressive. I really like Shock's ability to just shoot their face, so again, I think I'm just going to play a third Shock over the second Galvanize. Just keep doing that. Anything that's pretty horrible in this kind of matchup? I don't think so. I mean, like, Innocent Bystander is pretty filler, but it just helps make sure we're constantly slamming things on the board quickly. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with this deck for what we saw, game one. So, just swap a shock around again and head into game number two. All right, opponent is on the play for game number two. We have Inspector into Phantom into Rift Burst Hellion with two pieces of interaction. Two pieces of burn. Happy with the opener, especially on the draw, where we're more likely to hit land three on time. We did hit it immediately. Never didn't have it. All right, our opponent starts with the escape tunnel for a swamp. Sanitation Automaton, just a 2-1 little roadblock to stop some damage here. I am very happy to trade Novice Inspector into that, and I'm 
I was going to say quite certain. I'm fairly certain that even on the draw, we want to be the aggressor here, where I will trade one damage to them for two damage to me. So I think I do just jam in with Inspector next turn, rather than holding it up, threatening to trade with Automaton on blocks. Maybe that'll play out poorly. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, I'm perfectly happy to trade. That is a slight trade up. There's a projector inspector. It's a great shock target. I could shock it immediately. Um, I think it's better to just keep committing to the board for now. Because I can still just attack right past it anyway. Only matters if they play another detective right now. Otherwise, now I just have three burn spells in hand, so I just kill it next turn and draw a card off my clue. Well, they played another detective. It does matter a lot. The double inspector's kind of nasty. Well, shock galvanize it is to jam through for four. Depending on what we draw, that might change things. I draw another, like, three mana creature, then I'll just shock one of them and play that. Attack in in the sky. If we draw nothing, then just shock galvanize, hold on to lightning helix. Well. Depends, really. How much do we think being able to shoot their face matters? Because we have the clue token for the galvanize. So being able to kill a 5-toughness card could genuinely matter against a green deck. They played a 6-5 last game. So maybe it's best to hold on to the Galvanize and go for Helix and Shock on the small creatures, but then I don't have any burn that I can direct at their face. I don't know. If they've got the double black rare board wipe, they're going to blow us out this game because I'm about to throw two burn spells at their creatures and then they just <laughs> board wipe us anyway. That would go very far in their favor, but then we could play around that game three. It would be quite nice for that game. Okay, yeah, we just hit a land, so we're just going to kill both of these. I don't know if this is right, but I'm going to keep the galvanized to potentially kill a way bigger creature. Um, rather than keeping the Helix to shoot their face. We'll see. If we are missing, like, three damage to their face in the endgame here, then that's that's on me. Unless the only way that we got there was by galvanizing a big creature. Then, then it was still better to hold on to galvanize. Like, if we get them down to three, but it's because we killed a 6-5 that we got them down to three, then it's like, well, if I didn't have the galvanize, we wouldn't have gotten this low in the first place. All right, well, now I think I have to just sack the clue, though. If I hit another land this turn. Intrude on the Mind. That is a bonkers mythic rare. I've had it exactly one time, and it has been insane every time. It's a draw two or draw three that also spits out a flyer at instant speed. Card is completely busted, and we're going to have to just galvanize the blocker here so that I get in without losing a creature. The problem is, now I'm down, like, three more cards, and they're going to have some great stuff in hand. Guess depends how good these cards are. Okay, these cards suck. Evidence Examiner's the good one. So, you can have... Wait, what? Two? They say I give them two lands? Or I give them... The best card and another non-creature spell in the land. You can have two lands. I guess because they want the 3-3 body, so they want me to mill that, but I'm just going to kill the 3-3. They don't know that. All right, so you can have the lands, and I'm just going to kill your 3-3. I could draw the card first and shoot it for five, but yeah, I'm just going to kill the 3-3. All right, well, did not expect those piles, but I'm pretty happy with them. I probably should have held wide up in case I hit a novice inspector. Ooh! Magic Arena actually making the right play for me. Auto Tapper comes in clutch instead. See, Arena knows shocks on top of my deck. I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, there's another novice inspector in here. We have two, I think. So I think it was a little better to hold the wide up because it's 
If we hit a novice inspector, we 100% want to play it. If we hit a shock, we might want to play it, depending on what they play. So, I think it's basically always better to hold up the white source there. I mean, I guess there are two... There were two shocks left in our deck and only one novice inspector left, so... Still that argument. But we have the Crovod Haunch as well, and if we drew that, we would want to put it on the board, period. So yeah, white source slightly better to hold up without knowing what's on top of our deck. Hopefully nothing happens to our face down and we just get to jam in with a 6-7 now. Stupid, dorky 6-7 Gruel Hellion putting in work yet again. Be pretty cool. Oh, they had another evidence examiner? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's pretty nice. Multiple evidence examiners. Do not go to combat, please. I'm putting full control mode on because I don't know if it's going to stop before they move to the beginning of combat step. There, I'll just put a stop there, too. Um, That way they don't get to investigate here if they don't stop my shock. Cool. All right, stop the phantom. Cool with me. Gruel Hellion time. Yes. Ooh. All right. They are down to four. And they need to deal with our big stupid Hellion. Listen, I'm calling it stupid endearingly. Big dumb creatures are are near and dear to my heart. That's how I started playing. It was a guild-packed theme deck. The Gruel one. I didn't start playing during Guild Pact. I start pl started playing in 2009, but my dad got a bunch of structure decks off eBay. And there were multiple Ravnica ones. I was slightly scared when they started dumping man into that, but it's just Nervous Garden. Nervous Garner, they're just getting value. There. All right. Hellion might just keep wiping their board every turn. Just chomp, chomp, chomp. Just clear a path eventually. Not a lot of creatures bigger than a 6-7 in this format, but green, blue, black, that would be the kind of deck to have the bigger creatures if they opened them up. They could always draw into their course to kill. That'd be pretty nasty here. Just steal the Enforcer and then block the Hellion. And they are fully stable, and we have to draw really well from there. Yeah, out of the, all the cards we've seen from their deck, that would be their best draw by far. And there it is, right on cue. Still got uh, another shock in here, maybe to get that Enforcer out of the way and keep making them chump every turn. Could be good. Definitely not just going to attack in here. Um, and luckily, they can't really afford to just attack in either. Crovod Haunch, two 1-1s? One Not actually super good, but certainly better than a land. I think it's better to get the two one ones than to just leave that here. They only have two creatures on board, they're playing off the top. If I draw, like, a flyer, it just trades into Enforcer anyway. I guess if I draw a flyer, I can send the Hellion into the Enforcer. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think the plus two plus is going to be quite as impactful as having three creatures on board. Because we could draw into War Leader's Helix, or we could draw into... Or not War Leader's Helix, War Leader's Anthem, whatever that thing's called. Or we can draw into on the job to buff the whole board with plus two plus one. There's two copies of that in here I think we ended up with. 
either of those would be great to have the dogs out for. Cold case cracker. All right. Solid draws from opponent. Now they get to send in for two and gain two with Enforcer. I guess then I get to kill one of their creatures, but... Yeah, no, I guess they don't get to. Because, yeah, I would just kill two of their creatures. Yeah, I'm going to crack this. I guess this is slightly awkward if I draw the war leader thing, because we would burn them by playing the dogs. Uh, but it's still buff the dogs, which is useful. Ooh. Our only surprise witness is Novice Inspector. And I have nothing else to kill for that. Let's see, uh, we just do that. That is still fine. Basically top deck to flying Novice Inspector, which is kind of a good card. Just kind of. And then we found a neighborhood guardian. Well, there we go. Things are getting kind of threatening. Still don't think I'm trading Hellion. If I do, they're down to two blockers. Block there, block there, take two. They go to three because they're going to gain one on the block. Yeah, no. Their coerced to kills are actually, well, I don't know if they have two, but their coerced to kill is actually just really nice against Perimeter Enforcer. It's like the perfect kind of card to take because it's already a 1-1, so it's just all upside. Normally, like, you end up taking a creature that's kind of bigger and then you downsize it a little bit into a 1-1 death touch, but you still get to let it keep all of its abilities, so it's still a good card. There just is a slight downside to it. We're like one draw from killing them. There's so many different draws we could get that would get there. Shock, Lightning. Well, I already played the Lightning Helix. There's one Shock left in the deck. Uh, on the job gets there. There's two on the jobs. The plus one plus one to everybody gets there. There's one of that. There's like four cards, I think, that are insta kills. Um. But I really don't want to be in a top deck war against this kind of deck because we know they have a double black and X draw spell. That would just straight up be like a draw seven at this point if they hit the second swamp to cast it, which would completely end the game. I mean, they just have a full new grip of seven cards, so the quicker we can kill them, the better. But there's literally nothing I can do about that. We have to just draw better. Just draw better, noob. Get good. We know of at least one card in their deck that instantly wins this game. They do need, again, the second swamp, which we haven't seen. Maybe it's already in their hand and they're just waiting for the second swamp. Can we find a lethal spell before they find a second swamp? Wait, why? They nervous gardenered for a forest, right? And they already had like three. Maybe they had like a bloomkin in hand at the time or something. Kind of interesting. Yeah, and if they had the X spell in hand, they might have land cycled that. They did think for a long time before they cast this, but they've thought for a long time every turn for a few turns now. They have thought for 11 minutes more than me. That's just kind of how Boros versus non-Boros is going to go. Head empty, all attacks. Okay, there's another escape tunnel for the second black source. They don't choose to crack it during our turn, though. 
So they're trying to save it for unblockability, maybe? I'm at 26. What kind of unblockability do they really need? That is massively suspicious. What? Is this the Death Touch investigate trick? I guess they have the Death Touch investigate trick in hand. 26 here? I imagine we just take it then. I'm so tempted to block. I'm so tempted to just imagine that they didn't know that the big doofus has reach. But they've been staring at this board for a long time. I can't imagine they missed that. Alright, another novice inspector is genuinely a great draw. Gadget Technician is a sweet one, too. That triggers Neighborhood Guardian two more times. I don't know if this is correct, but I'm going to go for the slam -a jam Come on and slam and welcome to the jam. So they're, they're at essentially five with three blockers. They block here, here, and here. Take one, two, three. I flip up, they take four. They go to one, but they're not dead. If they do have the exact trick that I thought they did in hand, I think it's... I've literally never seen it played. I think it's Death Touch Lifelink and you investigate. So if they have that, it's actually really bad for us because they gain like six here just using it on Panther. I think it's going to be bad for us at any point. And we're only losing one of these creatures without trading, so... Yeah, I mean, let's just see what it is. Let's see what they got. Make them have it here. Oh, it's their own Hellion? Sure. Now they don't have a black source up, so it can't be a Death Touch lifelink trick. Okay, that is the most damage they can stop. So we're going to put them to one, which is not enough. And eh, it's pretty bad, yeah. Well, now we know about a Rift Burst Hellion. For the future. What is in their hand? What was that attack about then? So I guess they don't have a life linker anymore, so they might still just die next turn. Even though they're killing three of our creatures for free. Yeah, they actually still just die next turn because we have five creatures against three and they have no lifelink. Okay, they find the second swamp this time. No. Do they not have a second swamp? Are they just running duels? There's an eidetic memory, draws them a card, gives them plus and plus one counters. That part's less relevant at this point. They need a wider board state, a removal. There they go, wow. Yeah, that's perfect. Two creatures off the one card. Exactly enough to block everything next turn. That was the perfect draw off of the memory. Could still kill them with some top decks. Uh, on the job doesn't do it anymore. Granite Witness would kill them. And Shock would kill them. So there's two insta-win cards. And some draws that are pretty good. Basically any creature's pretty good. Alright, that's the Granite Witness. Let's see. They do have a castable spell in their hand, or they're playing in full control mode. Um, I'm 
going to go for it. I'm just going to attack with five creatures against four blockers here. See what that last card in hand is. Show me the removal. They do not have removal, so I guess we will never know what the final play was. All right, that is 2-0 in round number two. 2-0 two oh in the event as a whole. We are now firmly in the money, getting 4,500 gems off of this event. Super sweet place to be, but once again, see if we can't keep it up as we head into round number three. Here we are for game one of round number three. This is going to be a forced mulligan here, even on the draw. Can't really keep a one lander. Maybe I could if I had like one planes and a novice inspector or something, but I think it would be very rare. Okay, this is quite a bit better, but it's still pretty awkward. We get rid of the technician because we'll need to hit double red to get towards that, and we're on zero red right now. But the Novice Inspector can help dig into more mana if we uh, if we can't find it naturally. And we can curve out Inspector into Phantom, which is nice. Alright, now we go Inspector into Phantom into Face Down. Playing against Blue-White, their first mill is a Fuss and Bother, which is an incredible card. Both halves of the card are great at, uh, at their respective points of the game. There's the turn to deduce to get some card advantage. Ooh, now I have a perimeter enforcer to play. Whichever one of these I play right now, we're going to hit them for two next turn. I guess I actually play the Market Watch Phantom? Because I'm going to spend three mana on a 2-2 two -two next turn. That is not a detective. So this way I hit them for two in the sky next turn instead of just one in the sky. While I would gain the life, that is cute. I would like to deal extra damage first when our opponent is just setting up playing some card draw right now. Okay, that's concerning. That could try to outrace me, giving their entire board plus one plus one if they have enough detectives, and potentially making a creature unblockable every turn, so that's the problem. But now I get to play the witness to get in in the sky. Really hoping they don't have the dream blue-white detectives with a bunch of novice inspectors and inside sources and stuff. But they could. They don't have them in their opening hand, at least, it looks like. Because they would have played Inside Source before the Private Eye, I think. They do have a Granite Witness. Okay, that's still pretty nasty. Sure, plus two, plus one to everybody. We would just one for one trade here, but I think every one for one trade is worth it because both of those cards are premium, so we send in and then cast Double Enforcer post-combat. If they don't want to go for any blocks here. Maybe I still just cast all in the draw to hit them for 11. Probably not. Okay, if they're just going to do that, I think that's fine. We just double Enforcer to hold the on the job for later. Now I've got a lot of tricks next turn. I could on the draw, or I could buff both Enforcers by flipping the face down. And flipping the face down taps one of their creatures or untaps one of mine. Come on in, Granite Witness. Welcome to my face. Yeah, that Vigilance is also rough. Still have the blocker up while poking me for quite a bit of damage. Furtive Courier can be unblockable if they've drawn a second card in the turn, but Private Eye already does that. Um, but it also gives them some card selection. Draw a card, discard a card every time it attacks. Pretty great. Throw a Curious Inquiry on it. That's a great combo for a long game. I don't think this is going to be a long game, though. I think one of us is going to die in the next couple turns. All right. They're at 13. Go for some on-the-job trade-ups, or go for some Granite Witness flips. They're down to two cards in hand. Let's just go. 
for the on the job then. Sure. Good enough for me, right? Kill a granite witness, deal 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. What happens if I flip this up? Three power there, buff that. So I hit for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't kill their granite witness. Don't tap or untap. Yeah, we'll just do this. They are down to two. And we have three creatures, they have two blockers. And I can tap one of their blockers by flipping up Granite Witness. And they have nothing in the sky as well. And flipping up Witness buffs the Enforcer to be a lethal attacker. Okay, this could be incredible. Inside source, bunch of stuff on the ground. Keywords being on the ground. If they don't play anything... Alright, I was going to say, if they don't manage to play anything in the sky, they're dead. In many ways. Flip the Granite Witness, just cast a person of interest to buff the Enforcer. I mean, if I cast Person of Interest, I buff the Enforcer and send the Market Watch Phantom into the sky? Basically, any play I make is really safe. Just flipping up the Witness or casting the Person of Interest. Both super, super safe. Let's just cast the Person of Interest. They don't have a, a one blue mana counter in this format. Sets so four damage in the sky. Let's go. There we go. We will start round three off 1 and 0 oh against the Blue White Detectives deck. Pretty aggressive mirror match yet again. I can't view the battlefield. Uh, very similar to our matchup against Red White, so I like the shocks here a lot. Um, I actually do like the Galvanize here too, though, because the Private Eye is a pretty dang important card. That three toughness card, the three three that buffs their whole board with plus one plus one. Quite an important card to kill, and a shock cannot do it. So I'm not going to cut a galvanize for a shock like I've been doing every other time. On the job was very impressive there, and I think it should remain impressive. I don't really want a third because clumping up two on the jobs in one hand can be really bad. Um, like if you draw an opener with like one creature and two on the jobs, that's Super, super awkward, so I'm not going to throw a third in. Um, I could throw in another shock, I guess. That's kind of what we keep doing, but we keep cutting a galvanize for a shock, and that's not a thing I want to do here. So it'd be maybe cut like a Crovod Haunch for a shock. Or a Rift Burst Hellion or something. Like that. I'll cut a haunch for a shock, and we'll get back to work, heading into game number two of round three. Well, this hand is absurd. Our opponent is on the play again, obviously. They do get the choice since they lost game one. But yeah, I mean... Just a war leader's call turn three should be devastating against whatever they're trying to do. Phantom into War Leader's Call should be fine. I mean, I guess they're on the play, so they could play a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three by the time we're attacking with Phantom. In which case, Consultant into Call is slightly better if they have their 3-3. Three, three. Maybe I could even just Lightning Helix into the War Leader's Call and just Helix their 3-drop play. That's a little reactive. Probably not great. Oh, never mind. Lightning Helix the Familiar, so they don't draw anymore. They don't investigate anymore. Uh, seems legit. Do it while they're tapped out. Yeah, I'm just going to Helix that. Cool. Now they've tapped out of any potential counters. Here's the War Leader's Call. 
Drop two creatures next turn, shoot them in the face for two, and have a 2-4 and a 3-3 three, three out. Alright, if they have the counter unless you pay two, I would rather they counter Consultant than Phantom, so we lead with Phantoms that I have the two mana up. If they have the counter unless we pay three, I can't do anything about it. The counter unless you pay two is a common in blue. The counter unless you pay three is an uncommon in blue-white. All right, they do have the counter unless you pay two. All right, that's actually pretty sad because uh, we do have the Vigilante to put the plus and plus one counter on the Consultant, so I do still like the card here, but not as much as the Phantom. Oh, they suspected their own card? That'll be interesting. It must be a solid flip then if they were cool with making it unable to block here. I just really hope it's not a lifelinker, whatever it is. As long as it's not a lifelinker... I think we're fine with a suspected card on their board so that they can't block. Sure, yeah, 4-4 four, four Menace, that's fine by me. Try to race that, War Leader's Call goes a long way to uh, trying to do that. There's a land, rare land to surveil. On the job's not a horrific draw, because we'll have the six mana to play it and immediately draw the card off of it as well. Not like a great draw, because we only have two creatures on board, but I don't hate it. Novice Inspector, fantastic card. And Makeshift Binding, also an incredible card. Okay, that is really hard to race. Exiling our 5-5 five five and gaining two is really bad for me. Ooh. We found a way to race. Lifelink, baby. Big stuff from Permitter Enforcer here. So they're playing off the top now. Cracking a clue. So they got two draw steps this turn. Or two draws this turn. See what those draws are. Seasoned Consultants. Actually a mildly threatening attacker considering we're down to seven. They have two mana up here. I shouldn't be able to counter this uh, This on the drop. Oh, wow. Call a surprise witness is great. Okay, yeah, I think... I should have done this pre-combat. I guess this way plays around reasonable doubt. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. If they don't block, I'm going to go seven... 8, 9, 10, 11 life, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 power on their board. I think we are fully racing here. But yeah, I should have pre-combated this because of the Enforcer trigger for plus 1, plus 1. The Phantom trigger for lifelink's okay. The Enforcer trigger for plus 1, plus 1 is the really important part. Yeah, that was a bad, bad sequence. We would have gotten way more damage because... They did go for the chump block, so we could have had the flying there. Really bad sequencing there. We would have hit for one, two, three, four, five, six more damage. They'd be at two life right now. That was so loose. I was just like, 
instinctually wanting to hold on to it in case they did something to kill one of my better creatures. But the enter the battlefield triggers were so good there, we should have just done that pre-combat to get the plus one plus one and get the flying. Those enter the battlefield triggers are just very important for uh, sneaking in so much extra damage there. It could really come back to bite us, because Bother helps them a lot here with three blockers to stop all of this damage. There is a shock. Straw. I imagine we attack with everybody here, and they may want to try to like double block and kill Enforcer, and there is a possibility, not a really big one, but a possibility they block in a way where we just kill them with a shock. And with the shock in our hand, we can basically make sure they can't, like, uh, kill us on the crackback unless they top deck something. But yeah, that shock off the top would have literally just been lethal if we played last turn out correctly. All right, so the game plan, never mind, I was going to say the game plan looks like Chump Chump and make sure they can swing back with three creatures for their consultant. But they are changing their mind here. The shock is really, really good here. Like, if we, if we played it out correctly, it would have just killed them. And now since we played incorrectly, it makes it so if they try to double block and kill Enforcer, I stop it. And if they try to counterattack with three creatures for lethal, I also stop that. So they're just a rock and a hard place. Neither of their plays is going to work out for them since we hit Shock. A deduce that's a draw two, which is pretty big here. Yeah, draw two is huge in a in a top deck war in the end game. I have an eye off the consultant there and get more blocks on the ground. There are some creatures I can top deck that just insta-kill them, attacking in with flyers. Any detective I draw kills them. Any creature with one power kills them, because more leaders call. Uh, actually, literally any creature kills them. I just play one creature, shoot them in the face for one, and attack for four in this guy. So there are at least like 10 draws that just kill them, I think. And Gadget Technician is one of them. Really, really lucky that we didn't get punished in the end. Um, because while wow, that sequencing was not ideal. All right, we should have won that game several turns ago, so that was bad, 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 sloppy play there. Again, the pivotal line being the call a surprise witness. I wanted to play around our creatures dying so I could reanimate a better creature than just my 1-3, but again... Multiple great triggers for a creature hitting the battlefield with Market Watch Phantom and Perimeter Enforcer. We needed to just drop that creature on the battlefield pre-combat. It would have put them to a low enough life total that the top deck shock would have instantly killed them. Instead, we gave them enough breathing room to maybe top deck out of it. They got mm, slightly close there. Definitely way closer than they would have if I had played the game correctly. So, rough plays by me, but still... Solid, lucky draws with the deck. Just powerful cards in general do find us another victory, and we're now at the maximum prize out out of this event, which is super sweet. At uh, at three and O oh for the matches individually, we're getting six thousand gems. But there is still one final battle. This one just determining whether or not we'll be playing in the qualifier weekend or not but now i'm 
literally just perfectly happy either way because the amount of gems we're getting is incredible. We're going to be at 2,400 in the account. Um, it would be cooler for sure to be able to play in the qualifier weekend as well, but uh, I'm sure that would definitely be much more <laughs> cooler for y'all than it is for me personally. I don't actually care that much about competitive events. I'm not the most competitive player in the universe. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I wouldn't really play these qualifier events or arena opens and stuff. I just really love drafting, so I just like to go infinite. As long as I'm playing enough to get enough gems to go infinite and play for free, that's where I'm happy. But I know that you all do really love the competitive events, uh, so hopefully, hopefully we can win this final round and maybe get some of that competitive content out for you all. We'll find out soon enough as we head into the final battle. The final match of gameplay for this deck, win or lose. Here we are now for the final boss, the final battle of this event. We are on the draw against our opponent here. We have turn one novice inspector into turn two consultant. We can crack that clue to look for the red source. It is a bit awkward, but we've got an extra draw step here on the draw, as well as a clue token to find the red source. And if we do manage to drop a war leader's call, that is potentially a game-winning card, so we are going to keep the hand, and unfortunately our first draw is another red spell. Not looking great, but we'll see. Playing against green-white, and there we go, right on time, we find the mountain. Let's get the consultant down and jam for one here, I think. I guess if I wait, Consultant damages off of the call. I could just draw the card here. That's fine. It's going to be a while since I, until I'm attacking with three creatures anyway, and this way I'm also holding up a shock if they play a particularly good creature. Playing against black, green, and white with Mana Ramp with They Went This Way. So probably a decent matchup if they don't have any of the rare board wipes. If they have board wipes, we're going to have big issues. But if they're generally just ramp nonsense... I think most of our hands should be solid against a slower deck like this. Here's the War Leader's Call. Not drawing any more creatures with the War Leader's Call is pretty awkward. This is a card that needs a steady supply of creatures to actually be particularly good. We have two still. Just the two that we had in our opening hand. Oh my god, are we about to lose to five color niv -Mizzet? If they can resolve a niv -Mizzet, then uh, we are going to die. And they're just going to have like six mana next turn, including one of whatever colors they need. Okay, now still just four colors right now, um, but this is getting scary. I think I'd rather drop Granite Witness than Consultant to be mana efficient. Although they've got one and a blue up. If this green, splashy, rampy four color pile has the blue and one counter spell, then... You, you got me. Okay. I was going to say, I would be surprised. Like, we have no real way to know what their secondary color is. Actually, their primary color looks like black at this rate. But yeah, it's, it would be pretty hard for a four-color deck to be running a two-mana blue counter spell. It is one and a blue, so I guess it is splashable, but... I don't know. All right, well, they're at the point where they just have seven mana. They have whatever mana they've needed, so they can play just really big spells and try to crush us. Surveillance Monitor gives them a lot of blocks, which is pretty great. If they play any more Collect Evidence, they get even more Thopters, which is even better. I think I've got a massive chunk of removal here. We are going to probably galvanize that thing if we can. There's a face down to shock. All right. Um, I think it's worth taking a turn off to kill this before they can flip it, because who knows how big it could be. So let's go ahead and just shock the face down. This could be like a 6-7 or something. It is like a 5-5. Five, five. And then we can galvanize the surveillance monitor as well to get in here. And make sure that if they play any more collect evidence, they aren't um, getting more chump blockers. 
We've got them down to nine with another shock in hand and two more creatures now. Alright, crack a clue, draw a card. There's infinite mana over there. Homicide Investigator. When their non-token creatures die, they investigate. Get some clue tokens. Cool. Um, can kind of just shock that while also flipping this up. You can just flip this up and play Consultants and have shock up. They're at nine here. Think we do this? Just tap that. I guess there's no reason to play this pre-combat, is there? Could shock the Thopter. You exile the Granite Witness? Yeah. Okay. They do chump a novice inspector, alright. Are they gonna combat trip? No, they aren't. No, thank you. They're down to one card in hand now? I think this hand with War Leaders Call on board can definitely beat one card in hand, but if it's like the double black and X draw X cards out of my deck, then we could still definitely lose. Like they, they put in the work to getting towards a seven or eight mana win gone. I think our, our hand was slow enough that, like, if they end up killing us with some really high mana value bomb rare, like, they did earn it here. They put in the work, and we stumbled in the early game. Well, there you go. There's the thing. Doppelgang is the really high mana value oops, I win card. All right. Yeah. We just needed to draw a much more aggressive hand. Like, we're not completely out of this game, but... We are pretty unlikely to win from here. I guess I could just like play eight creatures over time. Play person of interest first before the vigilante. I guess double triggering the call is pretty impressive. All right, well now we know their deck plan. Draw a doppelgang after ramping. So we need to outrace them. We need to mull into our most aggressive hands. Because this card is insanity if it resolves. No shot. Sir Conrad off of the list? To just give them a mana sink that can kill me now? If I don't top deck into the win like immediately, they just keep activating Sir Conrad with two War Leaders calls on their board. Like any creature they play pings me for two. Anytime they use this, they ping me for one or two. Oh boy. And when any of their creatures die, they ping me for one as well. This is bad. I mean, I could win if I top deck like Lightning Helix, they're just dead. That's bold. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whenever another creature period dies, I can stop that damage freely. What? Wait, what is... Hit me for seven, I go to three. If there are... Th they can Sir Conrad twice. If I just make this block, and there aren't if three of the four top cards are creatures, I die. But if not, then they just lose. They block this, take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they have to... Out of our top four cards, there can only be one non-creature for me to lose this game. Which would be wildly unlikely. 
even our deck is less than 50% creatures. Theirs is definitely less than 50% creatures. So the odds of us losing to two Conrad Mills are insanely low. And that's all they can afford mana-wise. Unless they crack a clue and top deck into something that just kills me here. So we block and counterattack lethal. Like, this is an insane gamble if they're going for double Conrad. Our deck is like 14 creatures. Theirs is probably similar. 14 out of 40. They will need really good mills. Maybe there's something in their grave with an ability that I haven't noticed? No? Land, land. Alright, we got there. We got there, they missed. Even if the next two are creatures, we go to one and we, we win now. Land creature, all right. Oh my god. I was genuinely terrified. I was genuinely terrified. I'm doing the math sitting there like... The odds are so bad. The odds are so bad that Conrad kills us, right? Like, we just crack back. Yep. The odds were pretty bad. Ooh, okay. Terrifying, really close game. Luckily, we beat the doppelganger. They, like, did the thing. They ramped into the super big um, try to flip the game in their favor and win card, and still we barely got there thanks to having, well, our bomber, the war leader's call for so much extra damage throughout the game. All right, yeah, definitely a matchup. We got to outrace them. I do like the shocks, but I like everything else in the deck. Um... This looks like a solid Galvanize matchup. They had five toughness stuff for if we get a clue from Novice Inspector and have a Galvanize later. So I do like the Galvanize as well. I don't know what... I cut for another shock here. Again, I don't think anything looks terrible here. I think we just want to curve out, go to town. Maybe Call a Surprise Witness actually looks kind of bad because our creatures don't generally die early. We saw very little removal. That could be the pick. Or like the Crovod Haunch. Because it's like our slowest creature card. I'm going to get rid of Call of Surprise Witness. We'll, we'll see. I don't... See, my memory is so bad, short-term and long-term. Like, I really need the view battlefield button, so the fact that it's glitched out and doesn't work is a <laughs> pretty, pretty big deal for me. Like, I don't think they played removal spells on our creatures. They played, like, a combat trick out of green or something. But for the most part, we didn't end up with a ton in our grave to call back. All right, let's just, uh... swap a call a surprise witness for a shock and head back in for game number two. All right, well, I don't think I can keep quadruple red card, no red source. I guess I'm on the draw, so I could, if I do find a red source, it's turn three, War Leader's Call, turn four, Person of Interest, which is, like, solid, but we're not really curving out like we want to be. So, like, even when I do hit the red source, it's just a good hand. So there's no, like, massive, massive payoff for hitting the red source. Unless I go Mountain as my first draw, two drop as my second draw, then it's like, all right, well, there we go. Two drop War Leader's Call Person. If I draw perfectly, this hand's incredible. If I draw good, this hand's good. And if I draw average or below, then this hand's very bad. So I think I have to mulligan. All right. That's a good one. Um... I have one. Uh, I have a flip card that needs double white, and I have on the drops that need double whites. Uh, but I have no more planes than mountains in the deck. I'm still ditching a planes or ditching a mountain here. There's only one card in the deck that needs double red. It's one of the flip cards. All right, let's. Uh... Let's go Market Watch Phantom. I guess it's the same damage either way, but if they have cheap removal, I think I'd rather they kill Phantom. Maybe that's wrong. Alright, they're just going to set up with uh, Ramp again. 
Ooh, Neighborhood Guardian? Well, that played well, because now I want I just want to play Neighborhood Guardian instead of Perimeter Enforcer. And if I had played Perimeter Enforcer first, then I would only hit them for one this turn. So I was actually just... I knew what the top card of my deck was. I was omniscient. That's why we played Market Watch Phantom first. Tunnel Tipster, little 1-1 one -one that ramps them up. Can do some chump blocking. Come on, land. This hand's insane with land four. We can play both of these, or we can just play person of interest. Either way is awesome. All right, makeshift binding of the guardian makes it no longer awesome. It's still good. It's still great for us. But if we still had the neighborhood guardian, this turn would be explosive. Absolutely explosive. I am fine with the chump block, so I'm not going to play a creature pre-combat here. Because if I can kill the, the mana ramp without having to spend a removal spell, I'd be pretty down with that. Okay, I'm going to play these two, because uh, then Person of Interest gets the Detective for Enforcer. And we hit just as hard, we hit for 4 damage next turn. Unless I have to Helix something. That green-blue rare they had required double blue, right? So they're very far away from that. This game. Okay, that's another fantastic rare. Four mana for two two twos with Ward 2 at worst, and if they do manage to find creatures in the top five, it's even better where you just draw the creatures and flip them up when you are ready. They a lifelinker with perimeter enforcer. I kind of want to kill that, but imagine we play person of interest first because we've got good attacks with this. Innocent bystander for any ward card is a fine trade. Biggest argument to not attack with it is that I do have on the jobs in the deck. But I'm basically trading a 2-1 with no ability for something that's probably bigger later. Or their life linker, either which is good. Technically this investigates if it's dealt 3 or more damage, but that's uh, very... Um, Very rare occasion. Very narrow ability. Alright, we do trade into the lifelinker. Not bad. They're down to 14. I am not going to play the land. In case they have... Uh, something that makes me exile a card from hand, the two mana, one, one in black. Okay, they find their first blue source. I think they need a second for the X mana rare. Probably try to hold up Lightning Helix um, from this point on, so that if they do hit that rare, we can at least Helix one of the cards they're trying to duplicate. Oh no. Oh no, the way they're looking at the board makes me think it might only need one blue mana. If I was wrong, I misremembered it. This is why I would like to view Battlefield. Yeah, I think they're trying to duplicate Makeshift Binding and Person of Interest or something here. Yeah, oh, it only needs one blue mana? Okay. Well, if they don't draw Doppelgang, they just can't win this match, so... Game three, I guess? Will they miss their bomb rare in game three? If the answer is yes, we're going to win hardcore. But, I mean, we've just mega lost this game. They gain four life, rip our entire board apart, and get four two twos. All right. It is, it's literally doppelganger bust. So we'll spin that roulette wheel again for game three and hope they don't find it. Yeah, we're... Highly unlikely to break through this. Now I do have to play the land so I can hold up Helix after playing Inside Source. 
At least I do jam in the sky a little. Whittle them down a tiny bit. Closer to randomly dying to... On the job or something, if they just declare zero blocks. Not like that's gonna happen with the amount of creatures they have on board. That's wild, a single green, single blue. And they did hit a creature off of the cloaked thing, it's an evidence examiner, so they can start getting a clue token every turn. Just drawing a million cards. Guess I could helix that. But honestly, I think we're slightly more likely to win if we just try to cheese for lethal than try to actually compete one for one removaling their stuff. So I'm going to keep it for burn. Maybe it's not the right idea. But I feel like we're already just so far behind card advantage wise that there's not a massive point in trying to shut off evidence examiner here. Well, okay, if I draw shock, I guess I'll shock it. I'll still keep the three damage helix. Attack in with anything on the ground, and it trades into a 2-2, so we pass. There's Sir Conrad again. Oh, you know what's super nice? Game 3 is going to be our one and only game on the play. That will also be very helpful. Well, I am one mana from flipping that. That is... Spooky. It is something. Probably not spooky enough. Yeah, and I'm getting low enough, I have to just start trading a 2-2 into their 2-2 menace now. Kind of giving up on attacks. Just to prolong the game. But that's all it really accomplishes is prolonging the game. There's nothing we're really trying to draw into that flips things in our favor. We are not that kind of deck. Yeah, now they're getting a bunch of Sir Conrad damage in while they're doing this. I already know we have one in our deck. Might as well. Now we've got three threes to block their two twos, but Sir Conrad just mana sink kills us over time. Oh man, they've got buried in the garden for removal and mana ramp. It's kind of perfect for their deck. Ooh, if I have a Gearbane Orangutan, I don't think I do, but if I do, because they have that scene of the crime, I'll throw that in. And basically, if they if they have it in their opener and they play it as one of their lands and we hit a Gearbane Orangutan, that's just going to win. Just straight up Stone Rain. With a 2-2 body. What is this? Just reanimate two of our creatures and hit them? Hit us with them? What's the? I want to know what the other half of the card is. Oh, destroy a tap creature. Okay. I was going to say, why is that in their deck? Because they can destroy a tapped creature on the defensive. That is much more of an ability that their kind of deck would use. Alright. Game 3. Game 3, we're going to be on the play. And honestly, the only thing we need in this matchup is for them to not draw a doppelgang. And we will win... We're hoping to draw a nice aggressive hand to outrace them even if they do draw the doppelgang and there's nothing I can really sideboard to make the deck any more aggressive than it currently is. So I imagine we have to just run it back here and cross our fingers a bit. 
see how it all shapes up in the absolute final game of Magic for this event. All right, here we are for our one game on the play this match. Let's make it count. And... Roll on in with a bunch of damage is what I was going to say. It is way too easy to flood out with this hand, I think. Literally any land draw is a bad draw. So even if I only draw two or three lands this game, that's pretty flooded. Can't imagine I can just keep one two drop and one shock. Oh boy. Well... This is not exactly how I wanted things to go, but we still have a draw. From turn two onward, we'll have a draw every turn. But these have been the weakest openers of the event in the most important game. I guess that's not true. We have Mulligan to other hands at least once or twice, so I guess those were weaker, but probably our weakest keep of the event. Can't really mold a five here, I think. All right, come on, top deck. Let's hit some cheap creatures to get this on the job going. I am begging. All right. Kind of awkward on curve. Hit the one drop turn two, but it is still way better than not hitting a creature. And there's the tipster. I imagine that's fine. We just play Hellion here. I don't think I need to Helix to stop them from playing four mana plays. Most of their cards were three or five. There's a lot of three mana ramp in their deck, and there's five mana Sir Conrads and stuff. Oh, they have the one four mana bomb in the deck. So if we killed Tipster, we'd hold them off that for a turn. That's a really bad deal. Two for one, it completely stops our attacks here. Let's see if on the job gets anything done. It's a little bit done. Smart play from our opponent. Best play they can make against on the job. Still gotta go for it. It kills one of their creatures, gets two damage in, and draws me a card. It's still worth it. Card is so nasty. This is actually probably their best card against our deck. Like, the Doppelgang is certainly their win condition, but just being able to immediately put a massive roadblock out and just trade off into our first couple threats gives them so much time to get to their finishers with Doppelgang. And just two for ones, it just rips apart two of our creatures off one card. And there's the they went this way. So if they've got the doppelgang again, they've got us. Even if they don't have it, honestly, at this rate, we're not doing great. Okay. I will have the six mana to flip a Hellion on them. I will really have the six mana to flip a Hellion on them. Do I need to kill the Enforcer to slow down their life gain here? Or do I have to kill Tipster to slow down Doppelgang? If they have Doppelgang, they're just going to win, period. I don't think I play around that and kill Tipster. I think I try to maximize damage and clear out lifelink. I don't know. I guess they have no good blocks here, so we can wait till their turn for our decision. The lifelink is really annoying, though. I mean, we didn't really see too many other detectives from them. They've got the two evidence examiners. Yeah, I'm not sure where this helix is supposed to go. Maybe it is just on... Tipster. Yeah, I can try to outrace an Enforcer with a 6-7. It's something.
Send in the Enforcer. They go to 13. It's an inside source. Okay. Uh, if they have an exile attacking creature, that's going to suck, but... They'll have it. Like, all game. They're not going to use it on a 1-2 or anything. Or not a 1-2, a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Nervous Gardener for the land. Find Undercity Sewers. Oh, that can find any land with a basic land type. That's pretty sweet. They get to surveil again here. Dig closer to the doppelganger. There's the makeshift binding for the Hellion. Gain some life, get plenty of breathing room. Please, Arena. Oh, boy. All three games, man. I mean, they have seen half their library in all three of these games, but still. What are you gonna do? That's just game. What a disappointing way to lose. Honestly. If either of these last two games we could have just drawn a solid aggressive curve, I think we could have outraced them. Or if they just didn't have doppelganger as early. Really, we just drew our slowest hands in this matchup. And they had a lot of great interaction, which definitely made some average hands look pretty bad. But these were our worst hands still, I think of the tournament in the most important round and probably their best hands of the tournament in the most important round. I can't imagine they drew their most important card in every single game before this round, but maybe they did. Yeah, and the two losses were hide in plain sight into doppelganger as well. Like they needed the dream team combo without Getting so many early blockers so soon, even our like kind of mediocre early aggro could have found a lot more damage by now. But it's the the double blockers completely wall us off and force us into an early on the job. Yeah, just rough, rough all around. I think I played about as well as I could. Maybe I could have played a little bit better, but okay. Well, that explains it. Goodbye. Well, now we know where they had it every game. I am officially tilted. <laughs> this isn't the best deck we could have built against this nonsense. Is just try to streamline it, be as aggressive as we possibly could. That is what we did with our deck build. And we drew pretty slow, dirtily hands that missed out on curving out. We just played a one drop and then a three drop. And then another three drop, stuff like that in both of our losses. And in both of our losses, they hit the hide in plain sight into the doppelganger finisher.
to really, really clutter up the board early and give them all the time they need to reach that doppelgang finisher. Really don't think there's anything we could do there. It just happens. Get outclassed with some bomby bomb rares. And our one way to beat this kind of deck is outspeeding them. And we drew pretty slow hands and were forced into some mulligans here. Just a little bit of rough luck in the most important time of the event is all it takes to knock you out of a one-loss event like a qualifier playing event. So we will not be playing the qualifier weekend this time around, but honestly, that is probably fine for my sanity because it is more <laughs> murders at Karlov Manor sealed. And uh, I've done a lot of that now. We did uh, two... No, we did three runs of the best of one qualifier play-in, and now two runs of the best of three qualifier play-in. actually had a good bit of fun um, in the best of one qualifier play-ins. We played some interesting decks, got to splash around with green stuff, but this time around that... I mean, I'm not going to lie, Like, it, it's easy to have fun when you're winning. The first three wins with just brain-dead Boros aggro were fun, but that last game was definitely grating for me. That last match was rough because it's just the kind of matchup where we just don't have that many decisions to make. It's just like we got to hope that we draw really well and they don't. And it, it just didn't happen. So there's not much you can do there. So just kind of not that fun. And our first qualifier play in best of three, that sealed pool was just like I had no idea how to build anything there. There was no... Super fun choices there either, so I'm a little sealed it out. A little murders at Karlov Manor sealed it out, so at least uh, I don't have to play anymore, even if we don't get to play in the super competitive events, which would have been kind of cool, but it would have also meant playing more murders at Karlov Manor sealed at a super competitive level. I think you can only lose two times in the qualifier weekend before you're out, and obviously you can't re -queue. you can't like pay a bunch of gems to play again. It's just one and done, you're out, you're out, so. Slight bummer not to make it, just for like making a cool video for you all, but I'm perfectly happy to not play <laughs> more sealed right now. Ready to get back into the draft queues and build whatever deck I want to build, kind of follow what seems open draft my own synergies instead of just rolling with whatever we open. Be it my own mercy instead of the mercy of the packs. So, yeah. Not much to say here. Very simple deck, but very powerful one. The War Leaders Call, Lightning Helix, pulling us into the color pair. We had the good commons with the Novice Inspectors, the Inside Source, the Person of Interest. Had to run a little bit of filler like Hellion um, to get that uh, Hellion and Bystander to get that creature count high enough for what we're doing. But overall, I think this was definitely the best place to be in the sealed pool, and we got results accordingly at three match wins, one match loss, and I think the last round was still winnable with the right hands. Um, we just had to do some mulligans and hit some of our worst hands in the last couple games against some of our opponent's best hands, being able to play their hide in plain sight turn four into their doppelganger turn six or whatever each time. It's not super winnable for almost any deck, certainly not ours. So, disappointing ending, but still a great record overall, and we're leaving with a lot of gems out of this event. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.